In this lesson, we'll take a look at composite functions. And first of all, a definition of what a composite function is. It's a function that depends on another function. And a composite function is created or, or determined or found when one function is substituted into another function. And what that substitution looks like is this. The g of x function here is substituted into the f of x function in place of the variable x, or whatever your independent variable might be. Now, this is read as f of g of x, which means simply that you evaluate the g of x, the inside function, first. And whatever value that is, then that substitute into the f function. There's another terminology used for, or notation used for uh, this. And this little circle here between the two functions, it looks like the word fog, is also used to represent f of g of x. So both of these are used equivalently. And in the first example, I'm using that um, terminology here, or notation. And we're given two functions. f of x is x plus 5, and g of x is 3x squared. And we're asked to find f of g of x. And so that means that we substitute the g of x function into the f of x function. So the g of x function is the 3x squared. So 3x squared is going to go substitute in place of x in the f of x function. And so I'm going to replace the x with a 3x squared. And so f of g of x would just be 3x squared plus 5. So notice that the f function says whatever x is, you add 5. Well, x is now th the 3x squared. It's the g of x function. So it's the g of x function plus 5. Now, notice that this function's uh, domain is the entire set of real numbers. If you, can, if you compare that to the original two functions, this is just a straight line, a uh, slope of 1, y-intercepts 5. It would have a domain of the entire set of real numbers. There's no number you cannot substitute in place of x there, so it's defined for any real number you could possibly think of. And the same is true for the g of x function. It's a parabola, has its uh, vertex at the origin, and it opens upwards. So its domain is also the entire set of real numbers. Now, there is a restriction on the range for this function. If you can picture what this looks like, it, again, it's a parabola with a vertex at the origin that opens upward. So the g of x function, or the y values, can never be any negatives. Okay? It only has to have y values that are 0 or positive. Now, in actually evaluating this composition, the new function actually, this x plus 5 actually, just moves that parabola up 5 units. That's what this composition actually does in this case. And so this is the same parabola, but moved up 5 units. And so since there's a restriction on this range, there's going to be a restriction in this range as well. And because it's been translated up 5 units, the vertex is now at 0, 5 on the y-axis, and it opens upward from there. The lowest y value, or um, dependent var variable, can be is positive 5, and all other, all other dependent variables would be larger than 5. Now, in, in example B, if I want to evaluate f of g of 2, then I can use my f of g function over here, and I'm substituting just 2 in place of x. So notice the 2 went in place of the x here. So 2 squared is 4 times 3 would be 12. So it's 12 that I'm adding that 5 to. And so f of g of 2 is 17. Equivalently, I could have found, see, remember, you, you, you work from the right side of the page toward the left, or the inside out. I'm actually evaluating g of 2 first, and then I'm substituting that into f. So I could have found g of 2, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12, which actually is that value there. And then I could have taken that 12 and put it in the f function, 12 plus 5 is 17. Now, in example C here in uh, number 1, we're going to find, we found f of g of x over here, so we're going to find g of f of x. So it means we're substituting the f function into the g function. So we're going to substitute this x plus 5 into the g of x function in place of x. And so it would look like this. So g is 3 times whatever x is squared. Well, x now is the x plus 5, because x plus 5 got substituted in place of x here. So we need to uh, square the x plus 5. So x squared is x squared. 5 squared is 25. If you remember the shortcut for squaring a binomial, you multiply the first and last term together. x times 5 is 5x, and you double it. Now, if you wanted to just foil out or multiply an x plus 5 by another x plus 5 and multiply them out and collect like terms, you will get x squared plus 10x plus 25. And then we multiply the 3 into 
this. So g of f of x is 3x squared plus 30x plus 75. Now the domain of this function is the entire set of real numbers. Again, the both functions have domains, the entire set of real numbers, so any composite function of them would have to be the same. But uh, again, since there's a restriction on the range for this, one of the functions, there must be a restriction on the range for this composite function. Now, all this composition did here in g of f of x is actually took the parabola and moved it horizontally five units. So this actually is a parabola with its vertex at negative five zero. We actually moved it left five units. And so it's still sitting on the y-axis, its vertex, and it moves upward or opens upward from there. And so the domain is the entire set of real numbers such that y ha would have to be greater than or equal to zero. Again, if the vertex is on the x-axis, it uh, y is the y a y value of zero is the lowest y value, and it opens upward from there. So all other y values would be greater than zero. Now, notice that f of g of x and g of f of x are not the same. And in general, the composition of functions is not commutative. Commutative means that if you change the order, you should get the same quantity. And while that's true with like multiplying, for example, real numbers, uh, two times three is the same as three times two. That is not true with Comp taking compositions of functions. Another example uh, that's not commutative, for example, is division with real numbers isn't commutative. For example, 10 divided by 2 is 5, but if you change it around and say 2 divided by 10, it's not 5, it's 1 fifth. So that's another example of a, an operation that's not commutative. Last example on the second page, we have a newspaper company that creates roots with 50 subscribers, so n represents the number of people that get a paper. Uh, for every delivery person. D is the number of delivery persons. And uh, there's a supervisor for every 10 delivery persons. So in A here, we're asked to write D is a function of N. Okay, How many delivery people do we need for any number of subscribers? And so since there's every delivery person has 50 subscribers, then to find the number of delivery people, you would take the number of subscribers and divide it by 50. So for example, if we had 2,000 people getting papers, 2,000 divided by 50 would be 40. We'd need 40 delivery people. In B, it says write S as a function of D. So since every supervisor is in charge of 10 delivery people, we would take the number of delivery people and divide it by 10 to get the number of supervisors. So we continue from the same examples here. 2,000 divided by 50, we needed 40 delivery people. So 40 delivery people divided by 10, we'd need four supervisors. Now here comes the composition. Uh, in uh, C, we're asked to substitute to write S as a function of N. So not having to know how many delivery people we need, uh, how many supervisors would we need for any number of subscribers. And so we would actually take this D value, N over 50, and substitute in place of D in the second function. And so it would look like this. So S is D over 10, so in place of the D, we're putting N over 50. Now we simplify our, our rational expression like this by taking the numerator, the n over 50, and multiplying by the reciprocal of the denominator. That 10 has a denominator of 1 right now, so its reciprocal will be times 1 over 10. So 10 times 1 is, sorry, n times 1 is n, 50 times 10 is 500 in the denominator. So s is uh, n over 500. Now before we finish here, the chain of dependency. In the first example, we wrote d as a function of n, and we use this function d as n over 50. So that writes d as a function of n, the number of delivery people in terms of how many subscribers we have. The second and b relationship we wrote was s is d over 10. So that relationship writes the number of supervisors in terms of how many delivery people we have. What we actually did in c is we bypassed d, and we wrote s in terms of n, how many supervisors we need in total, depending on how many subscribers we have. And so that's the chain of dependency. Um, it actually writes one function in terms of another function. And so uh, this, th we could have written this, we could write this actually as s of d of n, because d depends on n, but s also depends on d. So independently, or, or intermediately, I suppose we could say, S does de depend on N. And that's the end of the lesson.